Hello, and thank you for joining us for the latest episode from Backstage Library Works. My name is Casey Cheney, and I am the Vice President of the Automation Services Department here at Backstage. Today I will be giving you a brief introduction to the core authority control services that we offer. While this is a relatively high-level overview, I do hope it will give you a better insight into what we can do to help you with your authority control needs. Maybe your catalog has had years of authority neglect, or maybe you're wanting to make some changes to your bibliographic records, or maybe you'd like to start incorporating other controlled vocabularies. With any of these scenarios, you are probably considering a one-time retrospective service prior to maintaining your files on an ongoing basis. Today I would like to talk to you about your options. We'll first talk about our two retrospective services, which are our base file and our remaster, and we'll talk about how they are different. And then I will talk about our ongoing services, which include updates, current cataloging, and notifications. The overview I am giving is relatively brief, so I am planning future videos that will go into more detail. Let's first talk about our base file service, which is our core retrospective service for authority control. The base file includes many global edits and enrichments to your bibliographic records, as well as building a new authority file, which we call an offmaster. The build of this authority file is based on the headings that currently appear in your bib records. With the base file, you would receive edited bibliographic records and all corresponding authority records. But before any authority file building can begin, the bibliographic records enter an intensive validation and enrichment process. I'm not going to go into the detail about each of these at this time, but you're welcome to visit our wiki for a more in-depth explanation. Our validation system is governed by hundreds of rules in order to bring your MARC records up to ca current cataloging standard, whether it be AACR2 or RDA. This includes correcting the formatting of certain fields, correcting obsolete fields and subfields, checking and correcting indicators, correcting GMD terminology, or even removing it, adding lexile measures or accelerated reader levels for juvenile materials, adding tables of contents, and adding subfield zero with, e with a URI to access points. And while it's not part of our validation process, any RDA enrichment needs would be taken care of at the same time. All of our validation and RDA enrichment processing is completely customizable, and while we do have defaults that we recommend, we realize that not every library was cut from the same mold, so we make sure to mold the services into what you need. After the validation is complete, we begin our AuthMaster build. You have the option of selecting vocabularies that you would like to match your headings against. Now, if there are any that you would like to explore matching that aren't listed here, we'd be happy to talk further and see what is possible. If you have a separate authority file of local names or subjects, we can certainly incorporate those as well. All your bibliographic records are then matched against your prescribed vocabularies. We do match in a hierarchical fashion, so we'll start with the full heading string first to find an authority record for the whole heading. If no full match is found, we'll start removing subfields from the end of the heading to try to find the next best partial match. All headings that find matches, whether full or partial, will have the authority records returned. A copy of these authority records is then retained and maintained at Backstage. Deliverables from the base file include updated bibliographic records, all authority records that were retrieved during the matching process, and any related reports that relate to either the cleanup or the matching process. You would then replace or overlay your previous authority file and then upload the updated bibliographic records. We do recommend completely replacing your authority file, but we do understand that some ILS do not have that capability, so an overlay would be required in those cases. Now our remaster service takes a different approach than our base file to building your AuthMaster, and it is available when it makes the most sense for the library's needs. When we talk about a remaster, we are talking about building the AuthMaster based on your existing authority records whereas the base file was using your bibliographic records. So we'll take your authority file, 
will update your authority records to the most current version of each, and will return the records for reloading into your system. And we'll go into a little bit more detail now about how that works. When a client sends their authority file for a remaster service, in order to build the AuthMaster, we need to receive the authority file split in a couple different ways. And the ways the file is split depends largely on the ILS that you are using. For example, if your ILS indexes authority records for names, subjects, series, titles, and genre all separately, we need to make sure that we keep the indexing the same on our end. So we would need to receive five separate authority files, one for each usage. If your ILS indexes only by names and subjects, then your names file may contain names, series, and titles, while leaving a separate file for your subjects and genre. On the flip side, if your ILS does not index any usages separately, then you may send us a single authority file with all your authority records. If separate indexing is required, it is essential that you consult with your ILS regarding the different indexes it uses, and it is vital that you send us the authority records already split because if we receive just one file of all authority records, then we set the usage in our system based on what the fixed field deems the usage to be and not necessarily what the heading is in your catalog. So if you had a personal name that was only used as a subject in your catalog, but the authority record allows it as a 1xx, then the usage would be flagged as both a name and a subject. And when updates to that authority record are released and we send you the records split by usage, you'd receive the update for both the name and the subject, and you may end up with an unlinked name authority record. Again, if your ILS does not index usages separate, you should not need to worry about this. If possible, we also request that if you utilize a separate thesaurus, such as MeSH or Canadian in addition to LC, um, that each of the usage files also be separated by the type of thesaurus. This just ensures that all vocabulary are loaded appropriately on our end, but if you don't have this capability to make this split, we're happy to do so for you. Authority records are then loaded as the correct vocabularies and usages as your AuthMaster. After records have been loaded, we'll check them against their corresponding thesaurus for more recent updates. If updated records are found, whether they are changed and edited in some way or flagged for deletion, we will save that record in your AuthMaster. Any authority record that was updated will be returned to you for reload into your system. We will split the files in the same way that you exported the original authority file to us. And we would also deliver any reports that are generated from identifying the changed or deleted authority records. Here's an example of a report for a changed authority record. All the highlighted fields represent the changes. So on the right hand side you'll see that the new authority record contains multiple new 024 fields, new 3xx fields, and a new 670 field. And you may be thinking to yourself, I really don't have the time nor the staff to dedicate to sifting through the reports of all of these changes. So we do have a solution for you. We can limit what is actually written to this report. So for instance, in your online profile, you can select that you want only changes in certain fields reported, as you can see in um, the checked option in section 5.3 of the profile. You may also choose to exclude insignificant changes. These kinds of changes include indicator changes, punctuation, or diacritic changes. And even if you limit the reports, the authority records with these changes will still be returned to you. The other report you would receive is the delete report. This report shows the original authority record on the left, as well as the replacement authority record on the right. Our system would flag the original authority record as deleted, and pull in the replacement authority record, which you would then receive. You may also opt to receive the mark records themselves for those that have been flagged for deletion. The vast majority of our clients do opt for full base file processing because they want to build a fresh new authority database and it could be due to problems within their 
current authority file, or maybe they want validation and other enrichments to their bibliographic records. A remaster, on the other hand, may be beneficial if you are currently happy with the quality of your bib records and your authority file is accurate, meaning that there are no authority records without a corresponding bib heading and vice versa. We always recommend a full base file process because it is the one process that ensures both your bibliographic file and your authority file are as accurate as possible. Now after the initial retrospective work is complete, you'll want to consider ongoing maintenance. First we need to address updates. And while this is not marketed as a separate service and is not charged as a separate service, it is important um, to ensure that your internal authority file is in sync with our version of your authority file. Whenever additions or deletions happen in your authority file by your catalogers, we do need to be made aware of these changes. And all we need is a text file or an Excel file with a list of authority record control numbers. And we do need these lists separated into additions and deletions for names, subjects, and titles. You may include genre in the subjects if you wish, or you can keep it separate. In the far left example, there are five different text files provided by one of our clients, and you'll see that they are designated into names deleted, new names, new subjects, and so on. And on the right hand side are examples of the LCCNs that are contained within those text files. And as you can see, they are very simple lists, but they do show the control number in the same format as they would appear in the 010 field of the authority record. Now this step is vital because we do want to be sure that you are receiving updates for authorities that you are actively using, and we want to avoid sending you any authority records for ones that you have deleted. If you processed the base file and you are interested in continuing using the Bibliographic Record Validation Service, we do offer current cataloging. With this service, we process any newly cataloged records with the same validation and matching algorithms that we did in the base file, and we return all your updated bibs as well as any new and updated authority records. This ensures that your bibliographic records are all consistent within your catalog. And we all know that nobody likes inconsistency. Our final ongoing core service is our notification service. With this service, we periodically check the AuthMaster we have on file for you against the national databases for updated authority records. We return any new, updated, and deleted authority records and their corresponding reports. If you are utilizing our base file and current cataloging service, we also check your previously unmatched headings to see if any authority records have since been created. I do certainly hope that this brief presentation has helped answer some of your initial questions regarding our core authority control services. Please feel free to contact me with any other questions that you may have. And keep your eye out for additional videos that we'll be posting regarding these and other services and resources. If you have suggestions for other topics you'd like to see covered, please do get in touch with those as well. Thank you very much.